Hello and welcome to today's anatomy question. Joining us is Judith Hansen Lasseter. Hi, Mama. Hi, Lizzie. So we're doing another pose from your book, 30 Essential Yoga Poses. Well and marked, I see, with tabs. <laughs> exactly. And this is from our Essential Alignment series on YouTube. So today we're doing pose number 19, which is called Viparita Karani or Elevated Legs Up the Wall Pose. Tell us something today, mom, that will help us enjoy this pose more. All right. This is a pose in which your brain in your head is lower than your heart. And that causes observable, measurable physiologic changes, which we, we experience as calmness and quietness, the urge to close the eyes, this sort of shrinking in of our uh, awareness from being pulled out in all kinds of different directions. So this pose is really good when you, for jet lag, for when you're too tired to sleep, for when you've just been running around and you, like a maniac and you feel like people are pulling your ideas or commitments are just pulling you all these different directions. It's what I call detail overload. Mm -hmm. It's not any one huge thing in my day, but it's all these things that I'm juggling. This person's calling that one's coming now that's happening. Oh, that changed. You no, know, this is that kind of feeling. And it's a really good antidote for that. Mm. And it is elevated. You could also just lie down and put your legs up the wall. You don't have to have any props. We're using minimal props. The book shows a lot more props, but just to make it simple for everyone and, and accessible. But here's the main point about the technique that I want to get across today. It's not about getting as close to the wall as you can get. Right. Because it's not available to many, many people because of hamstrings. It's not about stretching your hamstrings. It's about creating an openness in the belly and the chest. So one way to think of this is something I train people in experiential anatomy, proximal to distal. Proximal is like proximity near. Distal is like distance far away. So I always look for the alignment proximal distal like first what's the spine doing in this pose what is the spine doing which is it's in a nice slight arch mm. that's what opens the diaphragm opens the abdomen and the belly and opens the chest it's not flat so then the arms and legs so how the arms and legs are placed is in relationship or priority to the vertebral column in this particular pose okay if we can contrast that with triangle pose. Mm -hmm. In triangle pose, we don't look at the spine first, we look at the position of the arms and the pelvis, and then the spine receives their intelligence and their alignment. Got it. Okay. Here's the website for everyone. If you like these videos, you should join us at www.experientialanatomy.yoga. Join our mailing list and you'll get notified whenever we publish new videos. All right. I'm going to pause here and turn on my other camera. Okay. All right. So this is a minimalist prop. Use a bolster or some blankets firmly rolled up. And I want to show you uh, how to fold a blanket. Would you hold it up? We call this Tadasana of the blanket, and it's the position from which the blanket can be created into many shapes quite easily. So this time we're going to fold it long ways and put the firmer end toward the bolster. Now you may want two, three, it depends on you. It depends on this length of your trunk and the height of the bolster. This is a pretty fat bolster. It's a pretty thin blanket. That's working for her, but it's not the rule because I like to teach people first and asana second. So how can this person express this pose with comfort and ease? You mean to like another one exactly on top yes, of it? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. So now how to get into the pose, I think we should show slowly. This, this is the best way I've found. You sit on your heels. No, 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 don't go so fast. Go back, go back, go back. Just sit in Virasana and make sure your side hip is really close to the bolster. 
but slightly, if you can put your finger on the side bony prominence there of their thigh, where the trochanter is, that, that's a little bit behind the middle of the bolster, closer to the wall. Oh, your bolster moved away from your blanket. Okay. Then you're going to lean forward and put the arm, which sit, say, stay seated, stay seated. Put the arm, which is nearer the bolster underneath you. Yes. And then just like you roll over in bed, inhale, exhale, and just roll over onto the prop and swing the legs up. Yeah. Now, lovely. What, what I would like you to do, Lizzie, is move slightly closer to the wall so that we see a little more of a dropping of the tailbone. When you look at her right now, wait, 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 wait you see the pubic bone is up and it's almost like a line downward, slanted downward at the abdomen. So the ribs are not opening, the belly is not opening, the pubic bone is up. We don't want that. We want the opposite, we want you to move toward the wall so your tailbone is actually dropping like all the uh, back bends. You want that nutation movement, tiny bit more, if you would, tiny bit more toward the wall. There we go. Now the tailbone, and how you can see this easily is if you take your eye right to the border, pull down the shirt a little bit because it's distracting us from that clean line. Good. Look, take your eye to the border on the left side of the bolster from our viewpoint and follow with your eyes the arch that you see where the two, where the body and the bolster come together, that's showing you that this is an arch and the tailbone is slightly hanging. Now there are more props we can add, but this is the simplest one and, and gets you the basic, gives you the basic understanding of the alignment of the pose. Now it's as if the pelvis is pulling her toward the wall. And Lizzie, do your lower ribs feel like they're flaring to the side? They are, they're open. You can see them. And that's a back bend. It's not a back bend unless your ribs flare to the side. It's just a slant. So back bending is happening in the column, but it's also the ribs are opening to the side. And the shoulders, if you can internally rotate your arm, your right arm, your arms, they're not on the floor. They're a little bit being lifted up from the floor. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Could you show us the opposite of what I want? which is moving well off even more, even more, even more, even more, even more, even more. This is what, and letting the middle of the body hang down. This is not a pose, this is a slant. Now look at her shoulder, how it's rolled forward. Yeah. Yeah. That has, that's Perfect. just, that's just yucky. Yeah. Now move back again, maybe hold the bolster and kind of walk your feet up the wall a bit and move back to the arch position. Closer but a to the lot floor. of people, I think, end up like this in this pose because their hamstrings are too tight. Exactly. So this is not about stretching hamstrings. This is about opening from the center. Now we can we can see your 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 ribs, your lower ribs expanding, and and now you have that nice lagoon in your belly. So the way I like to describe this pose is the fluids in the legs come down and they soak the belly organ. So this is stimulating to the energy of the, of the pelvic bowl. And then the fluids like cascade over down and, and move out the rivers of the arms. This is changing your experience of, with gravity. It is quieting and physiologically measurably your brain state. If you had an eye bag, I would definitely put it over your eyes and you can stay for you know five, 10 minutes. To come out of the pose. I'm never coming out. All right, well, you wanna stay while I talk about contraindications? Yes. I do not recommend this during pregnancy at any time. I do not recommend it during menstruation. Um, or if you have any concerns with being slightly inverted, maybe you have gastric reflux or 
some problem with your eyes, like pressure in the eyes. If you're concerned at all, you need to consult a very experienced yoga teacher and your medical practitioner. But most people are able to do this, or at least lie flat and put the legs up on a table or a couch or up the wall is phenomenally and immediately relaxing. Can you think of any other contraindications, Lizzie? Um, maybe like, um, how about untreated, untreated high blood pressure? You should check with your healthcare professional. But if it's treated, I, I this could help it come down a bit. What about the also, spine? Yeah, it's also it's also wonderful. I, I have a lot of people, runners and athletes, who say after they've been working out or running, and this just keeps their legs from getting sore after races. Mm. it's just it's a moment of sanity in your day an immediate a manipulation of your nervous system and in, in such a pleasant way mm. now lizzie bend your knees inhale your breath exhale and roll towards us i think And rest there a minute and slowly sit up. So reflect back for us. Yoga is a practice of action reflection. What is your what is your reflection at this moment? Every time I do this pose, I think I don't do this pose enough. You know, when we are still in a pose, we have the opportunity to experience silence. Because silence is an internal event. It's not about what's outside you. And this pose takes the lid off and lets silence arise. Mm -hmm. Silence expresses itself when the brain takes a step back. And that state of deep silence is so addicting. Mm. that but it ha it arises from the inside it's not about ambition or performance mm. so that's a position where si you can invite silence to find you namaste namaste thank you so much mama thank you tell us where we can find you on the internet www.judith.yoga and I'm lizzielasseter.com and these videos are community of yoga anatomy enthusiasts lives at www.experientialanatomy.yoga see you there <sighs> okay I have to get up and go turn off the recording <laughs> thank you so much bye everyone Bye. See you next time.